All right, welcome back to the best training channel on YouTube. Today is track day. We're gonna be doing some contrasting sets. So some moderately heavy, longer sled accelerations. I'm gonna be doing 30 meters with 30 kilos on the sled, which is a little bit on the heavier side for that type of distance. And then I'm gonna be taking about a 30, 45 second break. And I'm gonna be doing a 40 meter acceleration out of the blocks, somewhere between three to five sets total on that. Following that up, we're gonna do some isometrics, we're gonna do some plyos, get a little bit more development on those and some intensity that I'm gonna bring into it compared to the last training block that I was on. But as of right now, today is Monday, September 16th. I'm gonna be heading to the States in about 10 days. And I've got a lot of stops on this, what I'm calling a mini US tour uh, when I go to the States. And I've kind of alluded to it a little bit, but I'll give you guys a little bit more kind of look on what the plan's gonna be. So I'm gonna first head off to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm fortunate enough to have been in a position to meet people, shake hands, have a lot of great connections in the world of strength and conditioning or fitness, supplementation, guys, biohackers, all that sorts of stuff. So I'm heading out to Tulsa, Oklahoma because I've been offered a treatment called very small embryo-like stem cells. So it's a variation of stem cell treatment and Rather than getting in depth to it right now about what exactly is gonna happen, I've already been given permission to be able to film while I'm at the lab and guys, show you guys kind of what's gonna go on behind the scenes. And you guys will actually be able to hear from the man himself and we'll introduce this man at a later date, but he is going to be the one explaining to you guys what the VSEL exactly is going to be happening within the body and how it's going to allow me to train harder, to see some more beneficial gains from the training that I'm doing. So there's a little bit of a preview on what's gonna be happening there. So I'll be in Tulsa for, I think I'm gonna be there for about two or three days. Then I head to Columbus, Ohio. One of my very good friends is the Associate Director of Strength and Conditioning for The Ohio State University. I'm gonna go spend five days with him. We're gonna train. I'm gonna tour the facilities at Ohio State. I'm gonna be on the sideline for one of the Ohio State games that they have that weekend. I'm gonna be showing you guys what it's like to be a strength and conditioning coach at pretty much the pinnacle of a, what a D1 football program is going to be. After Ohio State, I'm gonna be flying down to Austin, Texas and spending a week down there doing some training with Tim Riley. We're gonna be doing a podcast. Zach Zillner is gonna be there. Daniel Beck of Jump Science is gonna be there. Matt McKinnis Watson from Plus Plyos is gonna be there. So they're gonna have a lot of fun doing some different training variations. I. My idea when I get there is I wanna kinda of do what they do because you guys on this channel see what I do all the time. So my plan is when I get there, I'm gonna just kinda of follow around with what they do and we'll put together some sessions and get those filmed and up for you guys on YouTube. And then after Austin, Texas, I fly back home to Tacoma, Washington for a real short trip just to see family and friends. And then I'm back into Iceland. So the whole trip's gonna be about three weeks long. Uh, I definitely have some planned videos that I'm going to do. So I don't know timing wise though, if I'm gonna be able to get those things edited and thrown up immediately on YouTube. So there might be a couple week period where everything's kind of just dark and nothing's happening on YouTube, but just know there's some things going on behind the scenes. We gotta get videos filmed, edited and shot up onto YouTube, but there will be some really cool so uh, content coming for you guys here in probably the next month and a half. Enough chit chat about what's to come. Let's get into what we're doing today. I'm gonna set up the sled. We're gonna get some sled sprints, some block starts, and then move on to the strength work for the day. All right, I think you guys can see me right here, but we're gonna do 30 meters, 30 kilos. As you can see, I still have my pants on. I still have my long sleeve on, and that's because it is already freezing cold in Iceland. We've already gotten snow, which is absolutely insane that we're getting snow this early in the year. Like last year, we didn't get snow until late November and it was a very light snow. I don't even think we had much snow on the ground when it came Christmas time last year, which is absolutely nuts that we're getting snow already. So I'm imagining these first couple reps are gonna be a little bit of a grind, which is kind of why I'm giving myself a range on where I want to be on total reps today. So I've said like three to five reps on that. So 
probably going to end up being five total, but the first one to two reps is going to be almost like an additional warm up on what this, but for the sled sprint, I'm just going to be going from kind of like a modified three point stance. So a little bit more mimicking of what I feel like I would be in my blocks, but I'm going to be going from a three and we're going to go for 30 meters here, trying to be just patient, powerful, long, hard strides as we get this 30 meters done. So that felt just about what I thought it was gonna feel. Decent rep, not great, but now we're gonna take about 45 second break. We're gonna go knock out a 40, which is gonna be from the start line that you guys will see to this yellow cone here. All right, first 40 meter rep here. Let's see how it feels. Starting to feel like the blood is flowing a little bit. That second rep on the sled was much better. Rep number three for the complex. What I'm gonna do is set the camera to the side right there. And I'm gonna try to slow this rep down for you guys so you guys can really see like the first three to five steps on this sled acceleration. And hopefully I do a good rep and you can see that the focus should be on hip extension. I know a lot of people like to talk about triple extension and specifically like when you're doing any kind of jump, even like the Olympic lifts and sprints like that. Triple extension to me isn't necessarily an important part of an acceleration. The knee isn't the focus of the extension when you're going through, it's from the hip. Knee extension happens because of the hip. Knee extension shouldn't happen in spite of the hip. So if you're pushing through the hip and you're driving that foot back, like your knee extension isn't gonna be the most important thing because your power is coming from that hip. The extension of the knee happens because you're pushing through the hip. And you can look at a lot of top 100 meter sprinters, 60 meter sprinters or whatever, a lot of them won't even get to actual like knee extension. They get to a really good hip extension, but there's still a slight bend in the knee. They're not fully locked out. Like they'll get to a hip extended position. The knee still has a little bit of flexion into it. And then they're trying to snap that leg back as quickly as possible. The problem most people have when doing an acceleration is they'll get knee extension in spite of the hip, meaning that they're focused on trying to push through the knee versus kind of drive through the hip. And normally what that would look like is you have your knee kind of driving up and they put the foot down and then they extend through the knee versus extending through the hip. So when I say long, powerful steps, the length of your strides in the first 10 meters is going to be dictated on your ability to get extension through the hip first and drive that foot back down behind you for that repetition. So hopefully that happens on this one here. Not every rep is a perfect repetition, but we're about to find out. And then same thing on the block. Hopefully you want to try to mimic that push feeling that you have using the resistance when you go into either your three point stance or your block start. So the idea here, again, full extension through the hip, push back behind yourself as hard as you can and try to really extend those first three steps out as powerfully as you can versus trying to just be fast out of this position. All right, so I'm gonna keep it at four. Kind of like, I feel like that was actually a really good rep, especially out of the blocks. That was probably my best block start in terms of how it felt. So kind of like basketball terms, you wanna end on a make, right? You don't end on a miss. So 
and on a good rep i'm going to keep it there four today is perfectly good for where i need to be at right now now we're going to move into some isos and plyos so i'm going to throw on the shoes grab my kettlebells and then i'll explain to you guys what we're about to do for the iso plyo work all right so what i'm going to be doing for my first iso plyo complex is kind of a squatty farmer's walk i posted this last week on my instagram when i was doing this and i got a lot of questions about it so the reason i chose to do this kind of squatty farmer's walk is the four week block i did prior to this my iso plyo work was a little bit more on the extensive side so i was holding a split position with the kettlebells which works the knee a little bit because of the vertical shin angle though it also puts a lot of pressure onto that hip so i wanted to make this a little bit more of a vertically oriented movement rather than focusing so much on the hip i want to get a lot more quad involvement in it so i was thinking about like maybe doing a squat position hold here maybe doing a single leg position hold and as i was playing around with this last week i was holding that single leg position and i felt like the balance part was taking away from the focus on the iso so what i started doing was like just kind of holding it until i felt like it was about three to five seconds and i would take a step forward kind of find that mid foot position where you don't have a lot of pressure onto the heel the majority of the foot pressure is kind of like right behind the ball of the foot and you're just holding that squat position there and then taking Taking another step forward finding that same position holding that squat position there so a lot more focus on the front of the knee a lot more focus onto the quad it's more of a vertically oriented position and then i'm pairing it with a single leg like very intensive bound focusing more on height versus like single leg bounds for distance another reason why i wanted to kind of be in that squat position is it's very similar to some knee angles and hip angles that you'll see in early acceleration so getting that foot pressure kind of right next to the ball of the foot being in that position here and focusing on holding that position is very similar to like angles that you'll see in acceleration phases during different like milliseconds of a drive or anything like that so i'm going to do about four to five sets of this i'll do five steps on each leg holding each step for that three to five seconds or at least until i feel like i'm losing my balance i'll take another step forward hold it for five seconds and then i'm going to pair it with the very intensive single leg bounds i'm using 40 kilo kettlebells in each hand so what how i would like you guys to do this is find that squat position first take a step forward roll till you feel that ball of the foot hold it here Take another step forward, roll to the bottom of the foot, hold it. I think that was about five steps. I don't know, I lost count. I'm trying to count seconds and count steps. You end up losing count somewhere. And then I'm pairing that movement with a very intensive single leg bound. And I mean very intensive is I'm gonna be trying to bound for height, so not really going for distance too much. But what I'm focusing on doing is like putting that foot into the ground, like I want it to go through the ground getting that leg up off the ground, cycling through and driving that foot through the ground again. So I'll do about five reps on each leg here. Whew. So those were very sloppy but got the intent done. So I'm gonna do three 
So four more sets of that, and then I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do for isoplyo complex number two today. All right, last thing I'm gonna do for today's session is my second isoplyo complex. We're gonna still use the kettlebells. Rather than focusing so much on the quad and the front of the knee, we're gonna be in a little bit more of an extended position through the hip and through the knee, and we're gonna focus a little bit more on that lower limb, so the ankle complex and the calf a little bit. What we're gonna do is pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to take a step forward, get up on this toe. I'm gonna to keep that back foot on the ground for balance. Take a step forward onto the toe. So from the angle, you guys are right, you probably didn't see it very well. But what I'm trying to do is roll onto the ball of the foot, push up, get the back of the heel off of the ground, use this back foot more as just a balance because it's a little bit tougher to hold that position. You're gonna try to hold that for three to five seconds, roll through the ball of the foot to the backside, hold it again, three to five seconds. And then we're gonna do another intensive plyometric today, which is gonna be a pogo hop, focusing still on that lower ankle complex. We're gonna do five pogo hops for height on this, keeping the hands on the hips. So we're gonna keep take the arm swing out of it, focus solely on keeping the hands on the hips and trying to push as hard as we can and kind of react, bounce off the ground as much as possible for those five reps. And there you have it. So. I'm gonna do, again, four to five sets on that, but that's gonna be it for today's video. I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.